Hey everybody, it's Evan Santapani, and I'm coming to you today with a special called Leaner by the Dozen. If you're someone who uh, frequently checks out the Animal YouTube channel, then chances are you've seen the previous uh, installment of this called Bigger by the Dozen. So in this one, I'm going to kind of go over what I think are 12 of the most important foods slash dietary items, maybe even talk some supplements when it comes time to get lean. If you saw the previous video, we're going to have, certainly have some overlap in the foods. That said, uh, there's certainly some things that are going to be unique to this video and we're going to talk about them in a way that is, I guess, unique to getting in shape. Uh, before we talk any of the foods, let me just start by saying that, of course, when it comes to getting in shape, uh, AKA losing body fat, the most fundamental concept is being in a caloric deficit. So it doesn't matter what foods you choose, how perfectly balanced your macros are, how natural the foods are, how nutritious they are, if, you are eating too much, you are not in a calorie deficit, you are not going to get in shape, unfortunately. So, on the other side though, I'm not one of those people who's gonna sit there and say that the only thing that matters is being in a calorie deficit. No, definitely not. Um, you could have two people, and they're both consuming uh, 2,000 calories a day. And let's just say that that puts them in a 200 calorie a day deficit, right? So they're both in a caloric deficit but one person eats 2,000 calories consisting of, let's just say it's pure carbohydrates, or, or better yet, just garbage processed food products. And then the other person consuming 2,000 calories a day is using just nutritious, natural, whole foods, uh, balanced macros. I guess you could say that both of them, if they're in a calorie deficit, will both lose weight. However, it's pretty safe to say that the body composition of the two people is going to be significantly different. Because when you're eating a certain way and you balance your macros and you're giving your body uh, quality proteins, you're, you've got plenty of vegetables in there, you're not uh, just going crazy on a bunch of carbohydrates, yes, it certainly makes a difference in your composition. Uh, so we, we're not just looking for pure weight loss, we're looking to retain muscle bolster the metabolism, stay healthy, and get in shape. I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda, I guess, maybe go through the proteins first because uh, I guess I do consider them most fundamental, most important. When it comes time to get in shape, uh, you know, considering carbs, proteins, and fats, speaking for myself and most of the, uh, going by oh, most of what I've seen amongst other pro bodybuilders, protein gets kept high. Carbohydrates and fats become the two variables, uh, the two things that are gonna be manipulated, uh, increased or decreased, depending on whether they're cycled or uh, whatever your approach is. But generally speaking, protein is gonna stay relatively high. For, you know, for someone who's trying to retain muscle, protein is probably the most vital macronutrient. And someone else, I can already hear somebody saying, but, but carbohydrates are protein sparing. Yeah, true, but you're not gonna base your diet on carbohydrates. To that end, first on the list, and it's so boring, <laughs> but chicken breast. Uh, chicken breast is just whether you're gaining or you're trying to get in shape, it's just for most people, uh, I'm one of those people, it's just that utility protein source. It's fairly affordable, it's okay tasting, uh, after 15 years of, of eating this way, I'm a little bit tired of it, but what are you gonna do? Uh, it's, you know, and, it, and it, it, it's low in fat. It's just a good protein source. It digests fairly well for most people, unless you're someone who has some kind of issue with chicken. So I hate to say it, but if I was gonna pick one food that I had to, I guess, prep on, almost like I couldn't include anything else, it would probably be chicken or maybe like whole eggs, right? Because then we're gonna get some quality fats in there as well. Number two, and this is like my nemesis, but ground turkey breast, 99% lean, it's dry, 
it sucks, but when I'm trying to get in the best shape that I can, it works. Uh, I'll usually start off a diet with ground turkey that's like, you know, 93 or 94% lean, which sounds very lean, but actually has still a considerable amount of fat. And as things go on and uh, I need to start, you know, tightening up more and more, I'll switch to turkey breast. I'll usually have it for breakfast and dinner. And uh, usually it makes a huge difference. Also, cod. Super lean as well. Easy to eat, unlike the turkey. Uh, digests well. A little bit pricey. When I diet, you know, there's some guys who like to eat a lot of red meat. I'm not one of them. Red meat for me doesn't digest very well. And depending on, you know, what, what the experience of dieting is like for you, red meat could either be really helpful or it could be more of a pain in the ass. For me, when I'm dieting, I actually have a difficult time consuming the, the quantity of food that I need to consume. To consume six whole food meals a day, uh, and they're, they're fairly heavy on the protein, uh, some of them have a good amount of carbs in it, it, that becomes a challenge. So I look to foods that actually digest fairly efficiently and fairly easy because Otherwise, I just can't get in the quantity of food that I need to consume that day. The only protein source that I consume that isn't technically lean is whole eggs, but still they digest very, very easily. So that's my number four on the list. Whole eggs, uh, I think, are, are a great thing to include, whether you're off-season or pre-contest, because you don't have to add any additional fats to your diet. Uh, the fat that's in the egg yolk is very easily digested. It's high in choline uh, and lecithin, which are both just, they're, they're actually good for your liver. Whole eggs loaded with naturally occurring vitamins and minerals. And most people like eggs, myself included. And that really makes up the, my protein sources when I'm dieting. After protein, for me, in terms of, I guess, what I consider most fundamental would be vegetables. Because if, if I had to make a diet and, uh, you know, protein is going to be number one, but number two is going to be some kind of vegetable source uh, to get in the micronutrients that I need, you know, even though maybe I, I choose to supplement with a product like Animal Pack every day to, you know, give me added micronutrients, I'm still going to look to vegetables uh, just for you know, to help round out my nutrition and, uh, you know, carbohydrates and fat sources, like I said, they kind of get manipulated up and down. Protein sources and vegetable sources are my most fundamental things. So when it comes to vegetables, one of my favorites is kale because it's so nutrient dense and also because it's, it's leafy and green. Why is that important? Uh, leafy and green, when you're dieting, for whatever reason, it just seems to help in terms of giving you added energy, uh, also in terms of digestion. It's very common for people to have digestive issues when they diet. I'm not sure if it's uh, a matter of restricted fiber intake. You know, people aren't consuming as many uh, carbohydrates as they normally would, so their you know, bowel movements start to slow down indigestion becomes a lot more frequent for a lot of people. Something like kale, um, I don't eat it raw. I cook it really well, and I find that I digest it better that way. It helps keep my bowel movements more regular. Uh, it keeps any kind of reflux at bay, and I just feel better when I consume it. Same thing for lettuce. I find myself eating a lot of salads. You know, lettuce is something that's naturally bitter. And if, and if you read up on, you know, things that are bit, bitter foods, usually they tend to benefit the liver. And why is that important? Uh, obviously, liver health is something that's desirable, but your liver is your fat-burning organ. So the better functioning your liver is, and the better your digestion is, and the better your bowel movements are, the whole digestive process, the better you're functioning in that area, generally, the easier time you're going to have getting lean. And... Here I have beets. And you say, dude, what are you doing with beets? <laughs> Most of you probably say, well, why, why beets? Plus, you know, they have a good bit of sugar in them, right? Beets, for me, times when I'm going through prep and my digestion 
I start to get like backed up or my stomach just doesn't feel right. If I start including raw shredded beets, I'll get out um, the grater and I'll grate them up really fine and put some vinegar or some lemon juice on them and eat it with a meal. Not to be gross, but it just, you know, it increases your regularity. And I feel really good too. Beets are one of the best foods you could consume for your liver and for your digestion. Um, so for that reason, I've chosen to put them in here because, like I said, for a lot of people, digestive issues become prevalent when they diet. So after that, you know, that takes care of our protein, our vegetables. Now, a lot of you might be asking, well, what about fruit? Is fruit a good thing to eat when I'm dieting or trying to get lean? It's really not my number one recommendation. Could it be incorporated successfully? Absolutely. Generally, when it comes to fruit, right, there's the matter of not that sugar is a problem, but fructose, right? If you read about the way fructose is processed by the body, uh, at least as I understand it, you're going to, if there's a, an immediate need for carbohydrates, your body will burn the fructose. It will expend it at that moment. But unlike glucose, you know, other sugars, your body doesn't store it well, right? Like in the muscle, it doesn't get stored as glycogen. Some of it could be stored as liver glycogen, but it has a higher tendency to be stored as body fat. Now, that's in theory. How true is it? I'm not, uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. But I choose when it comes to carbohydrate sources, there's other carbohydrates that I look to before fruit that I think make more sense. And just based on my own personal experience, times where I pulled back on fruit intake, yes, I did get leaner. However, grapefruit, I think, is one of the most important things you could include when you diet. Because when I get to a point when I'm dieting where I might cut out any starchy carbohydrate intake, like anything like rice or potato, which we'll get to in a minute, I look to something like grapefruit to add in that there's virtually almost like no fructose in grapefruit. It's low in overall sugar, and something about grapefruit just in itself tends to increase fat burning. I just get leaner when I use it. So when would I use grapefruit? Well, when I get up in the morning, now I don't like doing cardio entirely fasted. I think that, well, at least based on my experience, when I have something to eat, I sweat more during cardio. I feel like my metabolism is just firing more. So I don't like doing cardio entirely fasted, but at the same time, I might not want to have, sit down and have a whole meal. So I'll get up and I'll have maybe like half a grapefruit or something like that, then do my cardio. And for me, that's like perfect. Um, again, I, I can't sit here and give you some kind of scientific explanation as to why it works or whatever. This is just something that I found over the years works well for me. And in people that I train and help with their diets and stuff, I incorporate with them and it seems to work well for them too. So I'm simply sharing it. I put a lemon in here just because when you're dieting, you know, you don't get to put a lot of stuff on your food. So that's something I'll, you know, if I'm eating vegetables, I'll just squeeze it, put it on. I think it's very, uh, it's, it's a good way to flavor your food and not have it be such a miserable experience. Uh, also, if you're someone who, you know, when you're dieting, you're starving, there is something to be said for increasing the acidity of the meal, whether it's with something like vinegar or lemon, uh, in terms of its ability to delay gastric emptying. So basically what that means is the food takes a little bit longer to empty your stomach, uh, to exit your stomach, and you know, you could stay feeling full for a little bit longer. Let's talk carbohydrates. I've got a bag of rice here and I've got some potatoes. And I kind of, you know, you don't need, you know, I wouldn't need both. So I kind of put them in, you know, they're kind of both taking up one spot on my list, rice slash potato. Uh, why rice or potato? Well, based on what I've experienced, uh, seeing as that they're both gluten-free carbohydrate sources, they tend to process a lot better. Uh, feel better when I'm consuming them. Yes, you may get the same amount of carbohydrates from a piece of bread or a serving of pasta, but if you were eating them in any significant quantity throughout the day, I could guarantee you, you will most likely feel better consuming those carbohydrates from something like rice or potato. 
potato certainly being the more nutritious of the two, you know, more vitamins, minerals, potassium, but rice just for a lot of people, myself included, is just so easy to digest, so easy to measure, and I actually like rice. And uh, you know, in terms of white rice versus brown rice, I like white rice. When it comes to rice or potato, a lot of people would have you believe it's gotta be brown rice, it has to be sweet potato. I can tell you that's not true. <laughs> you should really go with which digests better for you. Dieting, this is really all I've gotta say about carbs, right? Rice, potato, one or the other, you don't need, uh, you know, you don't need like, it's not like you need a variety of carbohydrate sources. Uh, we could sit here and argue whether you even need carbohydrates when you're dieting at all. Uh, I would say you really don't. The only reason I choose to include carbohydrates, um, you know, this I'm, I'm someone who's dieted several several times doing ketogenic diets, where you know for 16 weeks I didn't add any starchy carbs to my diet. It was just you know protein, uh, vegetables, and fats, and I had plenty of energy. Uh, it's not true, you know, if you don't eat carbs, you're not going to have energy. No, it's not true. Maybe if you were like a marathon runner. The reason I choose to include carbohydrates when I diet is because when you get to a certain size and you need a certain number of calories in your diet, it starts to become a little bit difficult to make up those calories with just protein and fat. Also, again, having done ketogenic diets in the past, I do believe that carbohydrates help keep your metabolism burning faster, stronger, whatever it is. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I tend to get in shape easier uh, using carbohydrates in my diet, not in a you know, massive quantity or anything, but keeping carbohydrates in my diet than when I eliminate them. You might notice I have a can of coffee and a box of tea here. I'm not a big coffee drinker. Um, but I do like tea. And I've recently, even though I'm not dieting at the moment, I recently started including a cup of black tea, strong black tea with breakfast, and then another cup at night after dinner. And my digestion has been really, really good. And I don't know if it's because of just, you know, drinking a hot beverage helps with your digestion, uh, or, you know, I've looked into it a little bit, and there are some studies showing that the consumption of coffee and black tea help to balance gut bacteria in a more favorable way. Again, I don't know what the reason is, but for that, uh, you know, that being said, I think that this is something noteworthy to mention. Obviously, the little bit of caffeine that you get uh, could, could give you a little bit of a metabolic bump. I'm not a big caffeine person when I diet. Uh, I don't feel great when I consume a lot of it. Not only do I feel that it starts to impede my ability to rest and recover, but also I start to get digestive issues from it and just like reflux. I assume it's like a nerve thing. Fats. I don't think you need a ton of added fat when you diet. At least I don't, the, in, you know, considering the way that I diet. If I, you know, if I eat some whole eggs each day, I put, I add some olive oil to a few meals. That's really all that I need. Um, if I start to get really depleted or I'm ahead of schedule, I may start to substitute the olive oil for something a little heartier, like nuts. Um, but I think olive oil is one of the best fat sources, especially when you're dieting. It burns real easy. It's nutritious. And uh, it's, it's actually another thing that's very good for your liver. And studies have shown that people who consume olive oil just burn more calories. Using something like olive oil uh, as an added fat is a great choice. I, I left, I have one spot left, and uh, I wanna talk this product, Animal Nitro. This is something I've been using for years. When I'm in a really deep calorie deficit, I start to get worn down. Something like this, right, for those of you that don't know, it's an essential amino acid product. The consumption of free-form amino acids when dieting is something that I've done going back to the first show I competed in. Uh, you know, I was 23, and the, considering the advice of a, a buddy of mine, you know, he saw how beat up I was, and he's like, dude, try using some amino acids during your training. 
Um, he goes, you'll feel a lot better. And he was right. Uh, the, the energy you could get from them uh, and also just the ability for them to keep you recovering and keep you full, uh, it's awesome. Right? Free form amino acids, what a lot of people don't realize, if you consume, say, 20 grams of, of free form amino acids, and this is, this, is, this is one reason why amino acids aren't really that sexy to people. People might use an amino acid product, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's okay. And it's really kind of a forgettable experience, but a lot of time the reason is the dose. Most people will consume an amino acid product and will take like three grams, five grams of amino acids. And yeah, of course, you're not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna do crap. But once you start getting up into higher amounts and using it, say, during training, 20, you know, 20 plus grams of free form amino acids during your training, yeah, dude, you're gonna feel it. And it's gonna have a, a visual, uh, a noticeable impact on your physique in terms of fullness. Uh, you're gonna look harder, you're gonna have more energy. Great product when dieting. Most people will overlook something like this. A lot of times, like I said, it's because they'll have an experience with amino acids and it was highly forgettable because they just didn't take enough. Um, there's other supplements that I use when dieting, you know, but they're, they're really supplements that I keep in my diet all year. A multivitamin, animal pack, uh, an essential fatty acid product, animal omega, uh, I'll use animal meal in the off season, um, sometimes in place of a meal. When I'm prepping, I may start off a diet with it, and although I could run it right up to the show, uh, I just tend to get to a point where I wanna eat, um, wanna eat my food rather than drink it. So at that point, I will uh, cut it out entirely. Uh, you know, there are thermogenic products like Animal Cuts, again, Although they work really well, I just don't do well with stimulant-based products, so I choose not to include them. That's about it. You know, just, just to kind of recap, you're never going to get in shape unless you're in a calorie deficit. Once you're in a deficit, yeah, you do want to have a, you know, you want to balance your diet. Well, I say balance, right? For me, that means keeping my protein high and really manipulating carbohydrates and fats. I've had a lot of success over the years by, you know, kind of cycling carbohydrates. Uh, I may have a, a day where, you know, I really throw my carbohydrate intake through the roof and take in six, 700 grams. On a day like that, I don't consume a lot of fat. And then I'll kind of run my carbohydrates down pretty much to nothing, maybe for a couple days, ramp it back up. When carbohydrates are low, I'll add in a little extra added fat. When they're super high, I'll drop the fat out. Really one of the key things is keeping your diet simple. I mean, these foods right here are more than enough uh, to diet on. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing that's not here that I would need to successfully diet for a, a pro-level bodybuilding competition. Keep it simple. Keep your food intake natural. You know, use whole foods. So keep it simple. Keep it lean. And really, that's my take on it. I hope this, this helps in some capacity. And until next time, I'll see you guys.